So last year, I went back to Kenya to visit my family. I was so excited to eat juicy mangoes and yamachoma, Kenya's most popular roasted meat. The most exciting part about this trip was that I was going to spend time with my great grandmother. I missed her warm hugs, her roasted yam and milk that always seemed to be in circulation in her small house. When I walked into her room, she looked up slowly and said, I was so excited that she recognized me by my mother's face. I replied, It's me, Waroguru. It had been six years since I last saw my great grandmother. She looked so small, lost in her thoughts. She looked tired. Maybe it's because she was 105 years old at the time. <laughs> I sat near her and took her hand, which felt rough to the touch. It was stiff, but strong. Placed it on my thigh, and I was filled with memories of when she would visit my grandmother's house where I lived. She always brought with her a whole basket of sweet potatoes or a chicken for us to slaughter for dinner. I, my great-grandmother told me stories about how enthusiastic I was as a child. Maybe a little aggressive, but she says that I was special. Yekoi was my first language, and no other child in my village or school that I knew of could speak it. She also told me stories about her wedding night. I'll spare you the details, but I learned that for seven nights, seven of your best girlfriends would accompany you to your husband's house. Their job was to make it difficult for your husband to touch you or lay with you in any way. And after the seven nights were over, he would have to bribe them with the finest gold fat and porridge. I thought that was really interesting. But throughout our talk, I noticed that her hand was restlessly tapping on my thigh. It was as if she was nervous and she kept looking away like she didn't want to follow up with the next question. Something came over me and I blabbered out, were you alive during the colonial period? She looked away again. I was alive. Nobody has ever asked me about my experiences during that time. I have so many stories to share with you, but what would you do with the information if I shared it with you? I would tell it to my friends in America, of course. They love stories. We both chuckled. But would anybody listen? Yes, I think they would listen. The few hours we spent talking about colonization were the most uncomfortable and difficult hours of my life. History was sitting right in front of me. My Maito, the Mau Mau freedom fighter. She spent seven years in the forest of Mount Kenya as a guerrilla, fighting against the British colonial administration. The stories that she shared were bloody, filled with violence, filled with sacrifice, filled with sadness, filled with love. They were powerful. One story that was painful to hear, but for me highlighted the beauty and the importance of this movement to her was when she was punished for having a child. My grandmother. With the growing anxiety of Mau Mau organization in Kikuyu land, the British placed Kikuyu women in concentration camps far away from the men. It was thought that if these women got pregnant during the time, that meant that they were sneaking off into the forest to meet with the Mau Mau soldiers that the British were trying so hard to capture. She remembers that night so vividly. It was a little after sundown and she had just given birth to my, to my grandmother, all alone in her small hut. Suddenly, the silence of the night and her newborn baby was broken by a colonial soldier storming into her hut. He noticed the infant in her arms, threw her to the ground, then proceeded to twist in my great-grandmother's tender breast with the plies until her nipples tore off of her body. But, my great-grandmother is a true soldier. She never gave up the Mau Mau or gave up their location. 
Every Gekoyo that was involved with the Mau Mau took an oath that bound them with God during this insurgency. Mogekoyo Wade, every Gekoyo person knew that if you broke this oath, that meant that you'll be punished by God, punished by the ancestors, punished by society, by either a lifetime of curses or by death. It was very painful to hear these stories. I started to question my true identity as a Gekoyo woman. I felt weak and almost undeserving to be part of my family. I started to regret all those times that I wish that my hair was more manageable, all those times that I wish that my, li my skin was lighter, all those times I refused to speak Gekoyo in front of white people because I was embarrassed of my identity. It was hard to believe that I had a warrior's blood running through my veins. The stories, I started to question my identity a lot. I mean, would I have stood up to the oppressive powers of the colonial administration to venture into the forest, ready to fight and kill like the animals colonial narrative painted us to be? Gekoyo people would grow their hair out in afros and dreadlocks, and they would dress in cheetah skin so they would seem more intimidating to the British when they would come out of the forest. Would I have stood up for my people, hoping that the future generation would live freely in their homeland, speaking their native tongues, and practicing our culture? I now understood why it was so important that I spoke Gekoyo. If I didn't speak Gekoyo, my great-grandmother would have never shared her stories about rainbow-colored dragons that used to live in the rivers, or about our beautiful burial ceremonies, or how women would marry other women, other barren women, so everybody would take part in the beauty of raising children. Through my great-grandmother, I learned that Yekoya history does not start with um, colonization. It transcends the violence of the Mau Mau or any narrative imposed on us by the British. Before colonization, we had a system of government that worked. We did not need the help of the British to implement state governments that did not work for the benefit of anybody but the elites and the settlers. Stories told by my great-grandmother changed my life. I now have a deeper understanding of myself. And it is important for me and you now, because I can tell you a different version of African history. One filled with heroes, one filled with love, one filled with communities that took care of each other. A lot of these Mau Mau Freedom fighters don't speak any other language but Kikuyu. And I am lucky enough to have a conversation with these people. I'm lucky enough to hear history from the people who were alive during that time. And I've come to understand that I am a Gekoyo woman. Not because I was born to a Gekoyo mother, not because I could roast a good smoke beef, <laughs> but because I had the honor to learn about myself and my great-grandmother. And I've come to see the beauty and just the beauty in my culture and the beauty in myself as a Gekoyu woman. This summer, I will be going back to Kenya to make a film about Mau Mau soldiers like my great-grandmother who fought effortlessly for our freedom, and for the reason I'm standing here today telling you a different version of our story, the Gekoyo story. I was able to capture her beautiful narratives by heart last year, but now I would love to capture them by film so I could share them with the world. And in turn, I taught her about the embrace of kissing. It's not a popular form of practice of emotion in our culture, 
but I was lucky enough to get a kiss from her. I was lucky. She kept asking me, when, whenever I would ask her for a kiss, she kept asking me, what is a kiss? <laughs> kissy nedo. Why did I kissy nedo? Like, what is this kiss you keep mentioning? And I said, pluck your lips, place it on my cheek or on my lip, whatever you prefer. But she placed, she gave me a kiss on my cheek. And I've come to understand that not everybody has the privilege of having great grandmothers or a tribe that you go back to and learn about yourself. But there's so many avenues that we could take. My African American friends use the online ancestry DNA kits. And it's beautiful how much light is brought into themselves when they learn that they're from the Congo or Nigeria or anywhere, any country in Africa. It changes how they carry themselves in the world. It changes how they speak to people. And I encourage everybody to embark on this journey towards learning about yourself because it's life-changing. And I wish you the most luck on this journey.